Hello students. Yesterday we started our unit, Unit 5, and we have the title of the unit is Do You Really Need It? Now we know that Do You Really Need It? is something that we see all the time, and we had the discussion about the basic word here, which is advertisements. Now we discussed different kinds of advertisements. We said that we can see them in many places. Now, we started with the lesson, which is the Listen and Discuss lesson that we have here on pages 68 and 69. Now, we have some questions here. We can see that we discussed, do you think you are influenced by advertisement? And also, there is the a second question, which is to describe an advertisement that you think is memorable or effective. So these are two questions that we did discuss, we talked about, and I asked you to think about the answers. And while we are going on with our unit, you may have other answers, and you may think of different things to think about uh, advertisements in general. Now, we are going to complete with the topic that we had yesterday. So you can see that we have the advertisement about a sports car. We also had an advertisement about a uh, floor shampoo. And also we have something about laundry detergent. The fourth advertisement was about water, crystal water in fact. And we have here, the last advertisement was about these sneakers. Now in the book, we do have the discussion questions that we have here on page number 69. They are comprehension questions and we are going to go by them one by one. So we have the first question here. Which advertisement appeals to the reader's desire to be special? So just think about the five advertisements that I just mentioned, the car, the shampoo, the detergent, the water, and also the sneakers. Now from the discussion that we had yesterday and the parts that we did underline, one of the advertisements make, will, or uh, rarely we can say that they, it will help the person to feel rather special to feel that there is something that he has or she has that is different from other people. So what do you think? Which one of them? Which one of these advertisements makes other people look at you and you can feel that you are different? So you can see that the answer here is going to be the car. Now we have here the sports car, the BMX 3000. In the paragraph, it was mentioned that other people will look at you with your car. Now, this is the first question. We have the second question. Which advertisement appeals to the reader's desire to do what other people are doing? Now, remember, which advertisement mentioned another person? And you may have the desire to do the same thing like this person. Which one? Now, if you can remember that we had the advertisement about the sneakers, and we said that this type or this kind of sneakers is the same kind that the MBAA stars could wear. So we have here the Planet Mercury sneakers in general, and then we have here which advertisements use statistics to sell their products. So actually here, we did mention something about numbers, about statistics, and here we have two types. So you can see that we have here the Dynex laundry detergent and the crystal spring water, they both had some kind of statistics in the paragraphs that we mentioned. Now we have also the question number four, which advertisements use famous people to sell their products, which is the same as we mentioned before when we did mention MBA players. And the last question here we have, which advertisements do you think are most effective and why? So from all the five advertisements that we mentioned, which one has the most effective appeal or the type that other people may be excited to buy or to see what is the advertisement about? Now, basically something that is very attractive and it is effective, it is something that is desirable, and we come to the conclusion that it is the car. So we have here, I think that the ad for the BMX 3000 sports car is the best because it makes me want to buy one. Now, this is a personal opinion. You may have something else. You may desire, for example, uh, the sneakers or some people who are thinking healthy, they may desire the water. So it really depends on what you are interested in. 
Now, moving on from the comprehension questions that we have, we do have the vocabulary, which we passed by on page number 69. So we did yesterday the complete exercise here, the matching. We are just going to revise what we did. So we have here the first word, which is the word admire. Do you remember when we just showed this picture and we have here the example, I admire you for your high morals. And we can see that the answer here is to respect, which is D. The second word was brand. And we know that there are well-known brands in worldwide marketing. And we did agree that we have G, which is the name that identifies a product or manufacturer. Then we have in three, exclusive. Now we said exclusive is something which is close to being special or something VIP. Now we have here the example, they have an apartment in an exclusive part of town. And we agreed that the answer is going to be F, belonging only to one. And we can say, for example, in a company. Now we have also number four. There are several types of formulas, such as film formulas, baby formulas, chemical, chemistry, mathematical formulas, or a way to do something in general. So we agree that it's some kind of mixture, or we can say a kind of combination. Now this combination can be of ingredients, or it can be generally a combination. So we have here, the answer is going to be with formula C. After that, we have number five, intended. So we said something that we want to do. Now we can see that the answer is meant or planned. For example, we intend to visit the Holy Mosque in a Medina next month. And note that we have here the ED in intended is just to turn it to the past tense. Number six, I also showed you this picture of the word revolutionary. And we have here all these meanings for revolutionary here. Actually, we have here a capture, complete meanings. But the ones that are connected or related to our lesson are the words in the green part. Now, do you remember yesterday's lesson when we talked about the sneakers and we said that they are revolutionary? So they can be close to saying that something is new, something is creative, something is innovative, futuristic, pioneering, untried, or unknown. So all of these meanings, they are related to the word or the meaning here that we have in the book, which is B, causing big change. Moving on, we have the last word, sophisticated. Now we have here the word sophisticated from the suit. We can see that something is formal. Now we also have the example here. I think a more sophisticated approach is needed to solve this problem. And we did agree that the meaning is having high class taste. So something that is very high class, or we can say that something is formal. Now we have the last word sophisticated is matched with E as we did yesterday. Now, as usual, we have something prepared. We have the complete exercise here. And I told you yesterday to relate as usual. Now we can relate all the words that we have here through one text that we have here, which is all in one. Now I'm going to go through a short text here. As you can see, we have here. Yes, so let's read. We are living the age of revolutionary products and designs. Wherever I go, I see something new. I admire how people of all ages design different things and some even become famous brands. Some of these brands are quite sophisticated since they are intended for rather exclusive people. These people have proved that the formula for success is actually creativity and dedication in order to succeed. So you can make your dreams happen only if you work hard. Now you can see that we have here all the words that we had in the lesson. They are in one text, they are in one place, and you can make the same use, just relate to your own ideas and your own experiences. Now I have something else here. I'm going to ask you to observe again, but this time I have other parts that are highlighted. So the same text you can see, but we have here other words that are highlighted. So let's just read the parts that have highlighted words in the yellow part. Wherever I go, I see something new. 
So you can see that this is a complete sentence. We have here, wherever I go, I see something new, full stop. But this time there is the highlighted. I'm concentrating on the yellow part. And you can see that the sentence is divided into two parts. How do I know? By using the comma. The second example we have here, let's start reading from here, some. Some of these brands are quite sophisticated since they are intended for rather exclusive people. Now we do have a longer sentence here, but this sentence has the highlighted word in the middle. So it's not at the very beginning, like the first example we have here, it is in the middle. And because it is in the middle, there is no comma. We're going to see why. We also have another example. So let's see here. These people have proved that the formula for success is so is actually through creativity and dedication in order to succeed. Now also you can see that we do have a long sentence here and the same thing we have here in order to succeed is in the middle of the sentence and there is no comma. Our last example is so only if you work hard you can make your dreams happen. This time we can see that only if is at the very beginning of the sentence and because it is at the beginning there is a comma to divide the sentence. So we agreed that the, we have here examples, we have here different words. Uh, we have these words, they come time, sometimes at the beginning and if they do there is a comma and in two other examples they are in the middle and because they are in the middle there is no comma. Now we're going to complete and see what do we have here. So we do have the parts here, as you can see the commas. We are going to move on and we're going to talk about adverb clauses, which are the highlighted parts in the yellow color. So the adverb clauses are going to be our grammar lesson for the day. We are going to move on and see our objectives for the lesson. We have number one, to deduct the grammar rules from sentences. Number two, to use adverb clauses in sentences to connect two ideas. Number three, to apply the correct conjunction in sentences depending on meaning. Number four, to use independent clauses and connect them using conjunctions. So moving on, we have here, as we said, adverb clauses. Now I gave you the idea of adverb clauses and here, like we did before, we are just going to revise what is the meaning of a clause before we start. So I'm going to give you an example here. Everywhere I go, everyone looks at my new car. Here you can see that this is a complete sentence, one sentence. There is a full stop at the end, completely, one sentence. And then because there is a comma, this means that we have here two parts. So actually this is going to be a part which we call a clause and we have another part which also we call a clause. So one sentence, two parts meaning that we have two clauses. How do I know? Because there is a comma. But put in mind that we are going to discuss more and it doesn't have to be a comma in the middle to divide the sentence. So we are going to say that we have two ideas. Now moving on, we're going to make it even more clearly. We have clauses. Now the two clauses, as I said, we have here different ideas. Now these ideas or these clauses, they can be dependent or they can be independent. So what does that mean? Now the dependent clause here is not a sentence on its own, not a complete thought. So the idea or the thought is not complete. Now you can think of the dependent clause here like a baby. A baby depends on another person. The baby does not act or does not uh, care about himself or depend on himself or herself. So this baby has to depend on someone else which means that the, he is not complete or she is not complete. They do not act alone. But the independent clause, we can just compare it to a young man. This young man can depend on himself or herself. Uh, they can be as people, they can act um, uh, separately. They can do things by themselves. So they give separate ideas or complete ideas, we can say. So we have here the independent can function as a sentence on its own, gives a complete meaning. 
Now, going back to our basic title, which is about adverb clauses, we are going to say that dependent clauses are actually adverb clauses. Now, going back to our example here, we said something about a complete sentence that we have here. And we have here the two clauses, as we mentioned. But if I just say, everywhere I go, everywhere I go, do you understand? Does it give you a complete meaning here? Now, actually, if I just tell you everywhere I go, there is something missing, which means that we have here an dependent or a dependent clause, sorry. And the other part, let's just ignore this one and say, everyone looks at my car. So if I come to you and tell you, everyone looks at my new car, here you have a complete idea or you understand something completely. So which means that we have here, this clause is independent. So now we know that the dependent doesn't give a complete meaning. And this actually is going to be the adverb clause. And we have the other part, which is an independent clause because it gives you a complete idea or a complete meaning. Now moving on, just to make sure that we are on track here, we have what is actually an adverb clause. It is a group of words that function as the adverb of a sentence. So going back here to our example, you can see that here, everywhere I go, all of this part, all or the complete clause here, is functioning as one word, as an adverb here. So we call it an adverb clause because it functions as an adverb. Now going back here, we have this adverb clause everywhere I go. First, an adverb clause. They begin with a conjunction. So what is a conjunction? We can see that we have here everywhere. Everywhere is a conjunction. Like when I read the examples in the yellow color and we said everywhere, we said in order to, we have also since. Now these are called conjunctions. So an adverb clause starts with a conjunction. Another point, they contain a subject and a verb. So you can see also here in the yellow part here, I go, there is a subject and also a verb. So we do note that the adverb clause, they have a conjunction, they do have a subject and a verb, but still they do not function as their own. And the third part here, we know that they come or can come anywhere in a sentence. So I can put it in the beginning and say, everywhere I go, everyone looks at my new car. And, and I can switch in the sentence or rearrange and say here, everyone looks at my new car everywhere I go. So here you can see that the, the meaning does not change, but the word order, the sentence order here, it changed. But note something that we have here, a comma, if the adverb clause is in the beginning, but if the adverb clause is at the end or in the middle of the sentence, there is no comma. So you do have to have something in the middle of the sentence, either a comma or the adverb clause. So since we do have our adverb clause in the middle, we do not need the comma. Now we have a complete idea about the adverb clause here, and we do know that there is a kind of linking in meaning. So we have here the independent clause, it links with the dependent clause, and they have a complete meaning together. Here, we're going to look at this sentence. We have here, everywhere I go, everyone looks at my new car. Now, we did mention that we have here the adverb clause at the very beginning and the conjunction everywhere, when we do have a comma. Another example, advertisements use statistics in order to sell products. Now, you can see clearly that there, there is no comma, but we do have the adverb clause in the middle. Starting with here, we have in order to sell products. This is the adverb clause, and we have the conjunction in order to. Also, we have here, since that basketball player wears that brand, comma, everyone went to buy the brand sneakers. So we can see that we have here the adverb clause at the very beginning. You can see that there is the conjunction since we have the basketball player is the subject, and we have wears is the verb, after that, we have here our comma. Now we have the fourth example. 
That advertisement says that stains can't be removed unless you use the new detergent. Now you can see that there is no comma, but we do have our adverb clause starting with unless you use the new detergent, and the conjunction here is going to be unless. So what do these words do? The ones with the red circle, they link together. They are conjunctions. We have here four types. We have everywhere, in order to, since, and unless. Now, we are going to see everywhere do, does have other words and their team. Like, for example, we have here everywhere, uh, wherever can do the same part or the idea. And we have here where. We do have another team. Now we have team in order to that we mentioned before. And with in order to, we have other words like to. We can say so, or we can say so that. We have the third team, which is since that we used. And with since, we have the same idea using because of, or we can say just because, or now that. And we have our fourth team here, which is unless. And like unless, we have here even if, in case, only if, and if, so we can just use if. So we do have the four examples. Now the four examples are the words that you can see in the purple are the words that we used in the sentences, but there are similar words that can be used and have the same idea. Now what's the point? I want to see why do I divide them into four parts. I do know that they are all conjunctions. They are all used in adverb clauses, but what is the point of using them? Now we're going to start seeing them one by one using this graph here. Now in the middle of the graph, you can see conjunctions based on meaning. So as we discussed before, and we said in any grammar lesson, you are going to see the structure, which we did when we saw the clauses and where is the position of the clause and the comma. But at the same time, we do have the meaning, which is very important. You do have to know what are you dealing with and what is the message that you are trying to give. So we're going to see what are the meanings that we have here. Now here in these four examples, you can see that in the highlighted part, in the gray part, is our conjunction. You can see because the shoes were on sale, I bought two pairs. Now if I say because the shoes were on sale, stop, there is no complete meaning. So this is going to be the adverb clause or the dependent clause. And you have the independent clause, which is I bought two pairs. So why did I buy two pairs? Because the shoes were on sale. The second example, now that it has permission, the supermarket opens 24 hours. So I do know that this supermarket opens 24 hours. Why? Now that it has permission. Now also we have here the third example. They closed the store early. Since there were no customers, you can see that there is the adverb clause in the middle. We have the conjunction. So we have here, why did the store close since there were no customers? And we have the same idea with the fourth. They went to the mall because of the sale. Now why did we go to the mall? Because of the sale. Now you can see that in all four examples, I asked why. Why did I ask? Because I am giving the reason. So this means that I have here the four conjunctions, because, because of, since, and now that, they all show reasons. Moving on, we have the second team or the second group. We have here, don't buy that dress unless you really need it. I'll write down my phone number in case you need it. If it rains, you won't or we won't go to the picnic. We're going to the picnic even if it rains. So here you can see that I'm telling you, don't buy that dress unless you really need it. I'll write down my number in case you need it. And we have here, if it rains, we won't go. So all of these examples, they show you conditions. I cannot buy the dress unless there is a condition, on one condition that I really need it. We will go to the picnic on one condition that it doesn't rain. So if it does, we're not going. Now there is a note concerning the fourth part, even if. We can see our note here. Use if to show that the condition affects the result. 
So we have your if it rains. This affects the result. Use even if to show that it doesn't or does not. Use the present tense with an if clause, even if it refers to a future time. So you can see that we have here rains as the present. Now the difference between using if and even if, if affects the result, but even if doesn't. So we can see that we do have here the conditions in all four examples. So we can use if, even if, or in case or uh, unless, just to show that we have here conditions. Moving on, we have here the third group. Now in this third group, you can see that we have just two examples. We have your advertisements use many techniques in order to convince people to buy products. Now, if I say in order to convince people to buy products, still there is a missing meaning. So I'm going to complete it by saying advertisements use many techniques. And we have here, I left my wallet at home so that I wouldn't be tempted to buy anything. So here I'm also showing something. I have an aim, I have a reason or I do have a purpose. So my purpose of leaving the wallet at home so I cannot buy anything. And we have here the purpose of using many techniques is to convince people to buy something. So we have here these two conjunctions in order. And we have here so that they do give the meaning of purpose. And we have here a note in order, or we can say in order to, must be followed with the base form of the verb clauses so with so that usually include a modal so you can see that we have here so that there is a modal here now we have here this is going to be the third group which is two words in order or in order to we can say so or so that this all shows or gives meaning a purpose now our last part here, which is he buys something wherever he goes, or the advertisements were placed everywhere you could imagine. It is very clear from everywhere and everywhere that it shows place clearly. And this completes to our fourth part or the fourth group here in the adverb clauses. Now we have here where, everywhere, and wherever they all give you meaning of place. Now here you can see that we have here all four groups. We have our complete lesson about adverb clauses and you can see the lesson on pages number 70 and 71. Now we do have our exercises just to prepare. We do have a match exercise on page number 70 and we have here also another exercise on page 71. Now you can start with these ex exercises and we will complete inshallah in our next lesson. So finally, we have our outline for the day. We talked about conjunctions. Then we moved on to uh, adverb clauses and using these conjunctions in adverb clauses. And we now know how to join these clauses together. And sometimes we can even shorten these sentences to give complete meaning. So we have here the very simple lesson about using adverb clauses and using conjunctions within these adverb clauses. Do your exercises, start with the assignment, and we'll complete, inshallah, in the next lesson.